All right, so humans are weird, okay? Humans are really weird. They don't really think logically, okay? They think emotionally. So one of the big things that I think holds people back from making money, and I experienced this, I didn't read this from a book, okay? And I'm actually an entrepreneur, okay? I experienced this, is limiting beliefs. We put these limitations on ourselves when it comes to our finances. So let's talk about my limiting belief. One of the biggest limiting beliefs I had for myself, which was confidence. I'll break down the story. I'll go in depth. This is a glory story, guys. This is one of those that get really interesting. So feel free. Feel free. You don't have to. Okay, I'm not making anybody do this, but you should subscribe to the channel. And of course, like the video and share it with your best friend because he needs to know about these limiting beliefs. The things that are holding people back, okay, are the hardest part to overcome. Because remember, when you're in this race to financial independence, success, whatever that means for you, you're only competing against yourself. At the end of the day, there is no other competition. So let me stop rambling, let's go into the story. What's going on everybody? I was back with another video. Today we're talking about limiting beliefs that I had. One of the biggest ones, this one right here, got me to make millions of dollars. I literally got rich after overcoming this limited belief. Now, I'm gonna break down the story, I'm gonna get into all the juicy details, of course, but yeah, I have to say it again, subscribe to the channel and like the video. If not, I get it, we can be friends, it's okay, let me move on. Let's talk about my Gainesville days. So I went to Gainesville originally when I was younger, and I wanted to do the whole thing because my parents, parents forced me and it was the right thing to do to go to college. Now, I was, if you guys didn't know, in high school on academic probation, I was a delinquent, I did nothing. I failed all my classes. It was a surprise that I even graduated in the first place. I basically cheated my way through high school. That's just the truth. Nobody's gonna say that on the internet, but I will because honesty, integrity is what I, I do. I, I just say, say the truth and you know sometimes things work out. But I'm, I'm in high school, academic probation. I gotta go and you know do the normal thing that all kids do when they go to college, right? So I went to college, I couldn't get into UF um, and I decided to basically do the, the sister school. The, the community college, because it's an easier transition to get into UF. Um, and I did that, whatever, failed, dropped out. I didn't fail. I was actually, you know, I took it serious. I got like straight A's for a couple of semesters. And then I was like, okay, some teacher like insulted my intelligence. I was like, I got pissed off and I just left. Okay, that's just the truth. Uh, so I quit twice. And now I was like, all right, full-fledged business time. I was trying to make money, okay? Now, I always say this to people, okay? Businesses are not really a business unless you have hired multiple people and you're making at least more than 20K a month. Now, the reason I say that is because a lot of times people do things for selfish reasons. They do things just for the money. They do things just for this. Remember, at the end of the day, all a business is, is a problem in the world being solved and you being compensated for it. That's it. You solve a problem in the world and you get compensated for it. So if you're not hiring people, if you're not scaling up, if you're not helping anybody else but yourself by making money, it is not a legitimate business. And I say this all the time. So that was me for the first two years hacking away at becoming a entrepreneur. I got fired from my, my serving job. So I started selling iPhones on eBay and I was hacking away. I was trying to do this business, this business, this business, fail, 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 Sl flat on my face every single time, flat on my face, boom, boom. So, you know, I was there for a couple of years and then I'm about to leave, right? I'm about to go move back in with my parents because of how broke I am. I'm with my girlfriend. I can't even support my girlfriend. Do you guys know what it feels like to literally know that you do not have enough money in the bank account to support your girlfriend that's in school for nurse practicing, trying to better her life, and you're not doing anything with your life? Do you understand what that means? When you're trying to make multiple businesses, going pretty much bankrupt, you, maxing out all your credit cards, and then having to move back in with your parents to put the cherry on top and leave, it's a four or five hour drive, leave all the way back to South Florida, move back with your parents, the disgrace, right? I'm getting all these, this negative emotion. So I had about two weeks before the lease was giving up and then I was officially gonna move back to Florida. So I read this book and maybe you've heard of the book before. It's called David Goggins Can't Hurt Me. And I had a friend, his name is Alejandro. And basically we read it together. He took it way more serious than I did, but I took it pretty serious. I got really pissed off and I was like, I have nothing else I can do. My businesses are failing. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to be an entrepreneur. So there's one thing I always, it's one of my biggest principles. And my dad like beat it into my brain when I was younger. It's one of the, it's one of the good things he did, all right? Um, strong body, strong mind. I actually have it tattooed right here in Latin. You can see that, it's tattooed in Latin. I just knew for some reason that if I get my body right and I get my mental right, you know, things will fall into place. So, and if you didn't know, there's two different types of intelligence. There's body intelligence and there's obviously, you know, brain intelligence. 
and they are both one and the same. So for example, when people get sm really smart, right? Um, you know, you got the, you got the talented smart, which is like the people that can just solve problems and they've been to Ivy league schools and stuff. But to me, really smart people, um, realize that health is a big thing. So they'll have to, you know, they'll get motivated after making a lot of money in some cases or realizing that life is not just about money. They'll start getting their health in order and vice versa. I see a lot of people getting into the gym and then eventually starting to become an entrepreneur and wanting to change their life in that way. Right. So they're one in the same. And, and there's a lot of science behind this. I'm not going to go into that. Um, and I was like, all right, let me just get my body right. My mind's going to get into place because obviously I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have the confidence. And that's the big limiting belief, the confidence. I didn't have the confidence because I knew I've read like 30 books on entrepreneurship. I had a legitimate business. I just, for some reason, cannot overcome my own self-doubt, right? That was a big problem. So I set off on the journey. Can't Hurt Me is about David Goggins. He's a long distance runner, very savage. One of the most savage people I've ever met in my life. He does crazy things like 270 mile races and stuff like that. Um, and he does it in like a very, very aggressive, like, you just go look it up. Go watch his podcast on Joe Rogan. Read his book. One of the greatest books I have. It's best recommended book by far. Um, but, you know, I read this book and I was like, all right, I'm committing, Joe. Alejandro, I'm committing. I'm going to do a marathon. I'm going to run a marathon. I only have two months to train. If I die out there, I'm going to do it. So I, I committed and I started running a lot, a lot, lot. Lost a lot of weight, was going to distance. Now, which brought me to my next point. And this is going to be, this is how I overcame my limiting belief of confidence, right? There's two ways you change your life. It's forced upon you, like life just changes you, like a death in the family or a car accident. And then there's another one where you force it upon yourself. I forced it upon myself. So let's get into the story. So I was running five miles, seven miles, losing weight, eight miles. I got to the point where I wanted to do a half marathon. So a full marathon is 26.3 miles. That's a full marathon or 26.2, excuse me if I'm wrong, 26.2. I had to run half, which is 13.1 miles. I have never done it. Now I did it, but I've never done it without stopping. Okay. I've tried four different times to run 13.1 miles without stopping and failed every single time. Then I came to my last one and it, it was ironic because I was running this big square in Gainesville. And the last part from mile 10 to 13 was the most popular part in Gainesville. It was like literally right in front of the stadium, right in the heart of the school UF, all the college students, all the girls, all the guys, everybody like literally hung out around this area from mile 10 to 13. So this speaks a lot. My, my self-doubt about my knowledge in school, um, my confidence around people in college. I think they're smarter than me, right? There's so many different variables. Like I was always intimidated of college. I always looked at it as a bad thing because I'm so bad at school, right? So many limiting beliefs and fears. And it ha happens to be at the end of my run, I face all of that. So let me get to the story. So I failed four times. On my fifth time, I'm going. I'm on mile seven. I'm talking about pain is 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 pain. Like I'm dying. Like, like I'm literally about to give up and I'm just forcing myself at this point. And I look at this, the, the, um, the light. And this is the busiest intersection in Gainesville. Again, let me say it. The busiest intersection in Gainesville. They got literally stacks of cars uh, all hours out of the day in the most popular part of Gainesville. And I'm running over here with my shirt off, like dying with my red, my face red and uh, all over the place, right? And I'm looking at the, the, the crosswalk and the crosswalk is like 10, nine. And it's allowing me to walk past, but I was pretty far away. So I'm looking at the crosswalk and I'm like, okay. Am I, and that's another limiting belief and doubt that I had with running is I would stop at red lights, which we all know you could just get around it by running a different direction, but I would stop at red lights all the time. And it was like all of this at once hit me. And I looked at that, that crosswalk and I said, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to trick myself, even though I'm in 10 out of 10 pain, even though everybody's looking at me, even though I'm in the busiest part of Gainesville, I am going to run across that thing. So I just put it in hyper gear. I went from running like a 12 minute mile. I just sprinted. I just said, I'm going to sprint. If I die, I don't care. If my heart gives out, who cares? I'm just going to sprint. I'm just going to force myself to sprint to get past this crosswalk. So it goes three and then we see two and I started sprinting. And then one, right? I sprint across that crosswalk and for some reason, reality slowed down. I started hallucinating. I'm talking about my whole world slowed down. They call this like runner's high or whatever the case is. And I literally tricked my body. My mind was holding me back because right after I ran past that, that crosswalk and I had this whole intervention and the, the reality slowed down and it was the craziest thing ever. 
I was running for the rest of the, the half marathon. I was running at a nine minute pace. The whole time I'm running at a 12, 13 minute pace and max 10 out of 10 pain. After that crosswalk, after running past that crosswalk, I was running at a nine minute pace. You ask yourself, like, I, I don't need to sit here and like pull up a scientific journal to verify what I just told you. I'm living proof that you can overcome your mind. Like I'm living, living proof in any way, shape or form. And this, this is a parallel to business because a lot of times people have limiting beliefs in general about their business. Oh, I, I, I was talking to somebody earlier today. I was like, you can make 10K a month. He looked at me with his eyes open. I'm like, what are you talking, bro? I can make 10K in a day. That's a limiting belief you impose on yourself. So I want you to think about your limiting beliefs. What, what are your limiting beliefs? What's your issues, right? Is it confidence, right? What is it? Self-doubt? Is it that red light, right? Is it caring what people think about you? Put all of that down because right after I did this, I went home and my business broke 30K a month. I, I broke 30K a month and actually took it further. We'll talk about this. We'll make a part two. I'm going to make a part two to this video because there was, I, it happened again. And, and now the second time it went from, it went from literally 30K a month to 150K a month. Right. And I realized, and you'll, you'll hear more about this in the next one. I realized that literally, literally everything that you don't have in your life is because of your limiting beliefs and you yourself. That's it. It's you. You don't have to believe me, but I know it's the truth. It's not your mom. It's not your economic condition. I don't care if you're born in a third world country. It does not matter. Even though obviously I, my heart goes out so these people are starving. It doesn't matter. You can change that. Everything in your life you can change, but I'm going to leave it at that. That's it for this video. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Catch you in the next one.